So Carrie, one of our uh, boot campers, during the boot camp, uh, she was asking as we were going through the different work plans that I recommend for you. Uh, if you're if you're not in the boot camp, if you're in the Ultimate Career Course, you have this. If you saw the Job Search Masterclass, you saw this. If you have never seen the work plans that I recommend based on your demographic, you don't have to worry because I'm going to put it in the notes. I'll put it in the notes for you. But basically, what I've uh, recommended is that they're based on, well, I'm not going to go through all of it, but based on statistics that I've gathered over 14 plus years, we've looked at how people find their jobs. I gathered up all the stats, I created all the percentages and we monitor them and we basically look at based on their age, their income level, some other factors and other things, but I try to strip it down and simplify it so that you can have an idea of what the probability and odds are of you finding your job by doing certain things. So just as an example, one of the one of the biggies is for individuals who are 50 years old and older or earn $100,000 or more. So regardless of your age, if you earn 100k or more, you have a 46% chance of finding your job through your network. And what I would then tell you is that if you have a 46% chance of finding your job through your network, you should be allocating about half of whatever time you're spending job searching doing network related activities meaning meaning that uh you know I, i've identified where i want to go so i'm researching companies i identified i would like to work for potentially for these 10 companies now i need to start planning uh how i'm going to get there through a human being not a computer system or an applicant tracking system so basically you know, who do I know? Who do they know? Do I know somebody at the companies? Do I know somebody who knows somebody at the companies? Whatever. At the moment you start trying to map that out, that's networking because that's network plan, network, networking planning and so forth. Sending emails, phone calls, coffee, drinks, dinners, whatever you're doing, that's networking. So one out of every two hours that you're spending job searching, if you're over 50 or you earn more than six figures, you should be doing that. Okay. So then I run through the work plans of how I would allocate my time between researching companies, uh, looking at published opportunities online, networking, applying to organizations, uh, work, uh, volunteering, and working with recruiters. Those are your six biggies, okay? So the question came up, if I'm changing careers, which is a little bit of a different animal, right? Because there's, you know, you have some disadvantages uh, because it's it's hard enough to get an interview when you're qualified. It's really hard to get an interview if you're trying to change job functions and you don't have the requisite experience. The applicant tracking systems are going to burp on you. Employers, even if you send them your resume, are not always going to be so kind. So Carrie asked the question how she should allocate her time, and Carrie, I have a better answer for you now. So here's how I would do this, and I think I saw you in there, so hopefully you are still here. So researching, so by the way, regardless of demographic, I don't care if you're 25 and you earn $15,000 a year or you earn nothing, or you're 55 and you earn $500,000 a year. This is what I would do, okay? Because you, you have the issue of not, um, you know, not having a bullseye set of, you know, experience that the employer is going to want for you. For that per to fill that particular position, so they're looking for somebody who has the goods exactly the way they want it. So there's there's some things you got to do a little differently. And here's what I would do: so I would research the companies, and I would figure out. Well, first thing is, and I'm not going to go into all the prerequisites about how you figure out what it is you want to do. Let's say you get to the spot where you have a good idea of what it is you want to do. So Carrie, in your case, you know, if you are on the administrative side or the research side and you're trying to slide into category management or category an, uh, analyst or category management or business analysis or, or, uh, is, or BA or whatever it might be, you've already made that decision. And everybody else, and I think, and we're talking about Connie here. I know Connie wants to make a switch from a BA to a product, um, product owner or product development owner. So you've already made those determinations. 
I would look at, and I, I have kind of two parts of this discussion. Here's how I'd allocate my time to answer the question. I'd research companies 20%. So I've decided what I want to be, the job function I'd like to, I'd like to uh, be, and I would then target companies that you think would be good that would hire for that function, 20%. So one out of every five hours, I would be sitting at my computer or thinking about how to identify those companies. The next thing I would do is I would spend a little bit of my time, one in 10 hours, looking at the different opportunities that were out there and available that were available uh, for that type of position or for companies that were generally hiring that, that have a number of those types of job functions in their organization. Then what I would do is I would spend about two, well, 60% to two thirds of my time networking. And I do wanna lump into this big bucket of networking anything that allows you to meet people that could potentially help you move because career changers have to rely on people more than anybody else anybody else somebody's got to almost vouch for you in fact and i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna give you a different way to look at this that i've never shared with with any of anybody before i've never recorded it i've never said it in the live hours i've never said it in any of my training programs but uh, I hope I hope it's obvious that you're going to have to lean even more heavily on your network. And so I would spend as much time networking as humanly possible. And then I would round it out with about 10%, um, you know, tailoring your messaging, reaching out to people and applying. Now, the one caveat I would add, all the volunteering that you can do, which I highly recommend. This, and by the way, none of this includes schooling going back and getting certifications, all that stuff is on top of you know, all of this. But I would, I would consider any volunteering that you do, if you're smart about it, it will be directly in alignment with where you wanna go. So you're not just volunteering to volunteer, you're actually volunteering, there's some method to your madness, and you're actually focusing on uh, opportunities that are helping you meet the types of people that could potentially get you into that new career or into those kind of companies. So from a percentage standpoint, that's how I would allocate my time. But I would consider volunteering to be part of that 60 to maybe two thirds uh, of, of your time networking. Now here's another thing I want you to look at. And I was thinking about this, actually I thought about this earlier today. Um, and I thought, wow, this is a much, maybe pretty good way to, to articulate this. I thought about, so I think about the questions you guys asked me, and then I think about me and what I went through, and why I chose what I chose, and I became a little distracted uh, in all this job search masterclass mania, boot camp mania, and all the stuff that I've been doing over the last two months. And there was something very simple that I did when I was 38. And I went from being an information technology and management consultant to being an executive recruiter. And what's really funny is I had never recruited a day in my life and it looks like it was such a huge left turn, but it was one of the easiest job and career changes to make because of what I'm about to tell you. So the less change you have in the change. The easier the transition, the greater the likelihood you'll be successful and the faster you'll likely be able to secure that job. And so what do I mean? Well, you got to look at the number of different things, the gaps that you have and the things that you have to learn. So let me give you a specific. So when I was an information technology and management consultant, I did not think about what I could do. Okay, I, I mean, I've, I hope I've beaten this into everybody's head. Don't think about what you can do. Think about what you want to do. And then think about how do I make that happen, okay? That's, that's being deliberate and proactive with your life and your career. I thought about, I wanted to help people. I love the coaching and mentoring. I wanted to teach. I wanted to help improve their careers and all this good stuff. And then what I did was I looked at, okay, where's the intersection between what I want to do and what I'm able to do? So if I have to pivot like that, that's crazy where I have to learn like 80 things. 
I didn't have to learn how to run a business. I already actually knew how to do that because I ran a large business within my businesses. I knew how to sell. I knew how to market. I knew fulfillment. I knew IT. Okay, so I knew all of these things. The only thing I didn't know was how to recruit. And, I'd, and, 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 and aspects of recruitment I actually knew, like interviewing. But interviewing is not recruiting. That's a, there's a completely different thing to recruiting, okay? Recruiting is going and reaching into somebody who's happy and, and figuring out a way to make their life even better uh, when they don't need you calling them. I mean, it's, it's crazy. But all that stuff, it was only one half of one portion of what I was trying to do that I hadn't done yet or that I couldn't do quickly or learn quickly. So, because I was gonna, I was gonna recruit for people in the IT sector. So I knew the industry. I knew how to run companies. I knew different facets. I knew, you know, systems and all that good stuff. Okay. So when you are looking to change, here's the sequence in the way that I would think about this. And and I know we talked about uh, Connie. I don't know if you're gone yet. And Carrie, and and you you both as an example. But but really for anybody here, I'd look at the company then the market, then the people. So what do I mean by this? Well, if I was trying to make a career change, if I could stay within the same company, that would be my first prep. Assuming that you enjoy the company, I would, I would look to see if there was an opportunity to move within the company. You're a known commodity. You know the people. You know the industry, right? You probably know a lot of the functions, so what are you trying to do? You're trying to pick up a portion of some responsibilities that you might not have yet. Okay, that would be like a baby change because you're, you're not changing your route to work, the, your building, the people, and so on. You might know the people in the other departments or whatever, but that's a change. But if I, so that's one thing you'd have to learn new, just the role. Then, then the, other, the other thing is, well, maybe that's not possible. Then what I would try to do is I would say, well, like in Carrie, in your case, are there other consumer product goods companies that would um, welcome you with open arms, even though you've never been a category manager or a category analyst or a business analyst or whatever it is that you might want to be? And I would, I would, so when I was researching my companies, I would only research CPG companies as my first iteration. Because now I'm I'm keeping the sector the same, and the type of and the and the business processes in general the same. I'm just looking for a different position. I have better credentials now. You have your degree now. You know you know kind of the industry and the players, and you've worked for multiple and so forth. So that's what I would do. I would look for that second. Then the next thing that I would do, if I couldn't couldn't make all that happen, is I'd look at the people. People I used to work with that knew me, that know I kick butt, okay? Or, you know, or, or are there people breaking off? Are there people you used to work with that are elsewhere that know you, that know that, hey, you know, she might not know that, but I'll give her the benefit of the doubt because, you know, I, I know she'll make it happen. So, so think about, think about this. So just use this to stimulate your ideas, all, all y'all career changers out there. The less stuff you have to change, the easier the segue into that new career. And I've given you lots of different steps to take. So, so think about this. Think about is there, you know, ask these questions. Is there, like, and, and like for Connie, and I'm guessing you're gone now, uh, your transition would be great if you could stay in your same company. Same for you, Carrie. And, um, and some of you that work for large, larger organizations, but even some of you that work for smaller organizations. Uh, small organizations would probably rather hire one of their own uh, than, than have to bring somebody in from the outside. So, so think about that. Company, market, people, you can do it any which way, but that's probably how I would go about it because you're going you're gonna to have the easiest time trying to get in uh, because it, you go in the same company, you're a known, you're known right? In the industry, you can at least leverage that you have healthcare experience, consumer products experience, and so on. So these are things to think about. So, 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 so that's the second. That's the second thing I wanted to cover with you guys today. I hope you know. I hope that helps. 
I don't think I ever really articulated it that way, though. The less you have to change, um, and actually, just as a you know, kind of an aside, uh, it was easier for me to go from being an information technology and management consulting executive to recruiter and knowing hiring and employment and job seeking and all that than it was for me to go from recruiter to trainer, coach, author, blogger, whatever, you know, experts profession that I have now. Um, not even close. One, one of these transitions took me a day. The other transition, I'm still in the middle of three years go running, three plus years running. So think about that, how crazy that is. So anyway, it's just nuts.